Hi all, and welcome to Monday Night's Treasure Vortex with Gypsy from YouTube's Zero Discrimination, as well as GypsyDigs.com, and myself, Amanda Digger de Gaz. So, hi all, first Monday of December, and we have an amazing guest tonight, Tim Ildigger, and we will be bringing him in shortly, but first, catch up with little Miss Gypsy. Hey, Gypsy, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. You're uh, you're traveling, huh? I am. I drove a little over eight and a half hours yesterday uh, from Texas to Mississippi and to come relic hunting and metal detecting. So, um, but before that, I spent some time uh, in Dallas and went magnet fishing. Ooh. And boy, I can't wait uh, for that video. I already started editing it. This morning I started editing it some. Um, I went magnet fishing. Uh, my friend Jackie had uh, bought a new magnet from me from the Digger's Den, uh, the 1,200 pound pole. Yep. And I still have my 300 uh, pound pole. And, uh, so I did a kind of a how to video and, uh, with using her new, um, magnet and anyway, um, lo and behold, I was saying, yeah, yeah, hopefully we find something really good, you know, to make this video really good. Otherwise, you know, sometimes, you know, a few fishing weights and lures and, you know, little things like that kind of get a little boring, you know. Um, cause I don't magnet fish near as much as I do metal detect or yeah. dump dig or any of that, although I've always enjoyed it. And um, I was chatting with her about, you know, some of my friends have found some epic things, you know, magnet fishing. And I said this certain thing, um that I would love to find kind of like you and I did, you mm -hmm. know, like when we put things out in the universe, when we say, well, we would love to find this, you know, today or something like that. So I basically did the same thing. And lo and behold, it was our last fishing dock. We went out and I pulled up a gun Ooh. and I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I could not believe it. I'm still in kind of disbelief and ended up calling the police. And so um, I'll have that full video, hopefully edited, hopefully while I'm still here in Mississippi and uploaded. Um, I'm hoping to, with it raining so much, uh, you know, um, hopefully though tomorrow we'll get out more and longer uh, to metal detect. Uh, today it's, you know, it rained all day today uh it was a bit cold out there um supposed to be a little warmer tomorrow i think high in the 70s uh but rainy again yep. so but tomorrow we're supposed to go to the actual site where we were planning on hunting uh actually today but the owner could not meet us there so we're waiting for the owner to be there so Hopefully tomorrow we'll get onto some Civil War relics. Today we just found some modern bullet casings and stuff, and uh, didn't we kind of did a more exploring, you know, hoping we would get onto something, but never did. But it was still fun just getting out in the rain and enjoying the day, and now just enjoying the evening here in Mississippi, Airbnb, loving it, and hoping to find some some good relics. Get on some good relics this week. Fantastic. I got to ask though, is the gun in the type of condition that the ones that I usually find are that are just rust buckets or was it actually like recognizable? And No, this is the, uh, a new gun. Ooh, uh, okay. probably had not. So it was locked up. I mean, it had started to, I guess, lock it locked up, which you'll see that in the video when the police officer takes it out of the package thing that it was in. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it also was fully loaded, uh, fully loaded and also had a, uh, an extra loaded, uh, magazine thing in, in the bag as well. 
And, um, yeah, I was a little leery because it felt so heavy pulling it off the magnet that I just left it attached to the magnet until the police <laughs> officer got there. Just because I didn't want to fire off. I mean, I tried a couple times to yank it off there, but I just didn't want to try too hard because I'm like, um, I don't know yeah. about this. I think this is loaded. I really could tell it was super heavy. And I was just like, I think this is a fully loaded gun. So I didn't want to try to, you know, I didn't want <laughs> something like that happening. Yeah. But got it turned into the police. And, and they even gave me the, uh, what do you call that number, the, the claim, or what do you call that number? Um, anyway, where I can look it up online and see how that. Um, like an incident report advancing. number or whatever. Kind of like that. I can't even remember. There's a certain name, but where I can look up and and track it and see, you know, what they found out, like if it's a stolen gun or you know, murder weapon or whatever. Yep. So crazy, crazy. Sounds like it was but a yeah. pretty eventful time. <laughs> it was. It was. So, what about you? Were you able to get out? Um, I did. I got out on Saturday with John. We went um and played in the field in the rain. We had rain as well, but it was 50 degrees, so uh, it was it was much appreciated warmer weather, and um, managed to just pop an Indian head penny, part of a colonial shoe buckle frame, and then a couple thimbles. Um, oh, before the rain, like shoe buckle it, frame, huh? Yep, yeah, it's flowered and designed, and I oh, wish it was intact, really? but it's not. Oh man. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was good to get out and, you know, any time to get, be able to get out is a good time. So. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Well, awesome. Well, I know we have a special guest tonight. I guess we should go ahead and bring him in. What do you say? Uh, I think definitely. All right. Well, tonight, most of you probably know him as Ill Digger. Uh, but we have Tim, Tim Blank. Welcome to the show. Yay, welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Well, so everyone well, knows Tim here. Tim was actually our very first call-in back in, I think it was September, when we gave out our, our the phone number for the show. He, uh, he was our very first call-in, so it's exciting to actually uh, get him on the show, have a lot of questions for him. Um, he's, he's found some amazing finds, and yeah, I can't wait. Do you think you could um, just give us, uh, give us a little bit of information on where you might be located and, and how long you've been treasure hunting? Sure. So, Bill Digger kind of explains part of my name. I'm... Uh... I live in Illinois, northern Illinois, north central. Um, I've been melee teching since 2009, so like 13 years. Um, I've detected in 16 states and two countries so Ooh. far, other than other than the United States. Wow. Oh, well, we'll have to hear all about that. <laughs> So, uh, Tim, what got you uh, interested in metal detecting or treasure hunting? What was uh, was there a specific someone or or how did that all come um, about? Well, as a kid, I mean, when you know, I was probably in the early '80s, I've seen a guy detecting in, in town. I've seen him a couple of times, and I was always curious. I mean, I'd, I'd seen or heard about metal detectors, so I knew what the guy was doing. I was just curious what he was finding. I never did get a chance to talk to him or nothing. And then, um, probably in the, uh, I guess it was in the late eight nineties, um, I started watching a show on the outdoor channel called Gold Fever with Tom Massey and his brother Perry up in Nolan, Alaska. And they right. were nuggets, nuggets shooting for nuggets and the Tamley piles in Nome. And they would find these little gold nuggets. And I was like, man, that's so cool. That'd be so fun to do. I said, man, I got to get a detector. So what I did is I joined the GPAA, and I got their claims catalog. And come to find out, there's, like, nowhere to find gold near me. So I was like, well, I'm not going to go out buy a metal detector in order for me to find nuggets around here. 
So uh, fast forward probably another five or seven years. Um, I was thinking about it again for some reason. And I just kept, at the time, I didn't, wasn't really in a position to spend the money on it. And uh, I went to a friend's house, and he had some stuff sitting on his, his little bar in the basement. And I said, what is this stuff? And he goes, you know, it's stuff I found with my metal detector. I was like, yeah, you don't have a metal detector. Yeah, I just got one. I was like, man, I think about getting one. He goes, hey, don't do it. You'll be addicted <laughs> like I am. <laughs> I was like, man, you think so? He's like, yeah. I was like, all right, I'm going to go buy one. <laughs> So I went out and bought one, and uh, yeah, he was right. I'm fully addicted. It's awesome. Um, yep. And then finish that story. This this past uh, summer, I actually got a chance to go up to Nome, Alaska, and look for nuggets in Nome and hunting the tailing piles, just like the Perry Perry boys are doing. Years ago, when I see him on TV, so it's actually kind of come full circle. So that was kind of a special, special occasion for me. Oh wow, that's great! Yeah. Did you say what machine so, you started with? I did not say what you seen. I started with I started with a white Prism Four. I bought oh, it, wow. but he was. Yeah, I think it was like uh, $360 or something. And I bought it at a jewelry store up in Rockford, Illinois. And the jeweler sold whites and garrets in the back of his shop. And oh, wow. uh, I had a, yeah, I had a friend tell me, oh, you got to get this whites prism floor, man. It's just, that thing's just great. It's great. It's great. It's great. So I went up there and they had one at that shop. And I'm like, great, hey, there's, there's the one I need. So that's the one I bought. And that's what that's when I started with. That's awesome. My first detector yep. was at a gold like coin and, and jewelry store as well. <laughs> yep. Out in the back they had the detectors. <laughs> yep. Those prisms are good. What was your best uh, or first find that really, you know, got you going with that machine or your favorite find with that machine? I think my very first, like, one that I can really remember, I, mean, I found a V-nickel, the 1901 V-nickel I found in, in 2009. But one special find I did have with that machine that I'll never forget, it just it was kind of a fluke, but I'll never forget it, is I got a, in this yard, it was an old old yard, and I had found a couple wheat pennies, and I got some time under my belt with the machine, and I kind of learned what, you know, a deep wheat penny might sound like, and I got one of those, another one of those signals in the yard. I probably got three. You know, like, oh, here's another wheat penny. So I dig this plug, and it, and I dug it nice and thick, because I knew this coin was going to be at least five inches deep or deeper. So I dug a really big, thick plug, and I flipped it over. And before I could get my pinpointer out to start looking in the bottom of the hole, something caught my eye in the plug. And I look over in the bottom of the plug, and I can see this blue stone sticking out. And I'm like, what is that? I kind of Ooh. reached in there with my pinky and just tried knocking the stone out. And when I did that, this gold ring flipped out of the side of the plug. I was like,